All right, so Physics 131. This is uh, the next lecture in Chapter 1. Um, we're going to do Sections 1.7 and 1.8. Uh, so we've covered the basics, very, very basic, very simple things, uh, units of measurement, um, significant digits, metric system, those kinds of things, just the very, very basics. Now we're going to uh, look at something that's very, very important, but you may not be as familiar with. Uh, these are the things, these are the concepts of accuracy and precision. And how do we use these in real world calculations? So uh, for the next three sections, uh, this lecture is going to cover, like I said, the next two. But for the next three sections, for the rest of chapter one, you need to be thinking about how uh, measurements are used in the real world to make things work. Uh, this doesn't need to be that the level of engineers, it's just the level of a technician uh, making measurements um, perhaps to make a repair, an adjustment, a calibration. So these things are very important to make sure that measurements work out in the real world. Okay, so again, you may not have heard about these things, accuracy and precisions, precision, in the way that we've defined them, uh, way that we are going to define them in the next two lectures. But these, these are what allow um, engineers to build things that work, technicians to repair things that work, um, and technicians to calibrate things so that they will work. Okay, so let's get started. Um, accuracy. Now, with accuracy, uh, that word may mean something in your mind, uh, the way that we use it, kind of in normal speech. It generally means something, well, it could mean a, a range of things, but in this case, with respect to being able to uh, design, calibrate, and repair things, accuracy needs to represent the number of significant digits okay so for example um i'm actually going to jump down to this definition here the accuracy for measurement refers to the number of digits called significant digits and we're going to kind of look at significant digits more closely um you might think what where does that come in let's let's think about counting to start with right a uh, an exact number is something that we are, that we obtain by counting objects, whole objects, um, you know, like students, people. But you can't have, and that's because you can't have half a person or a third of a person uh, in real life. So there's no such thing as accuracy when counting objects that cannot be divided. Uh, there's just an exact number. So that's that's kind of by contrast. Everything else, nearly all of the data uh, of technical or engineering nature involve approximate numbers. Because uh, when you make a measurement, there's always a level of approximation that you're making that measurement to. And we call that level of approximation, we call that the accuracy. The extent to which we can say this is uh, an accurate value. So again, we have to define that specifically, and the way we define it specifically is accuracy means the number of significant digits. It's a very useful definition. Um, okay, so for this first example, the average distance between the moon and the earth is 385,000 kilometers. Okay, um, why do we say average? Well, because of course the orbital mechanics of the moon are such that it is actually an elliptical orbit. If you don't know what an ellipse is, it's just sort of you take a circle and you squash a little bit, um, which means the moon is sometimes farther away than that, sometimes closer than that. So uh, when we say that the radius of the lunar orbit is 385,000 kilometers, it's not exact, it changes. Okay, so the first reason why we use accuracy is when we need to use or represent something in terms of averages. Okay, now, so there are three significant digits in this value, the three, the eight, and the five. Uh, these zeros are just placeholder zeros, they're not significant digits. 
Okay, we'll get to the rule, rules of those in a little bit. Next example, a measurement of 0 0.025 centimeters indicates measuring 25 thousandths of a centimeter. Okay, its accuracy is indicated by two significant digits. Now, we are going to talk about how something else called precision uh, is is at work here we can define the precision because you may think wow we, we can measure something down to the nearest thousandth of a centimeter that's pretty good it is pretty good precision accuracy is a different thing accuracy is just the number of significant figures okay uh, third example measurement of 0 0.0500 seconds so let's look Let's compare these two. The, the zeros preceding the two and the five are not significant zeros. They're just placeholders. They tell us where uh, the decimal point goes basically with respect to the system of units that we're using, in this case, the centimeter. Uh, so in example three, the first two zeros are just placeholder zeros, but the zeros after the five are significant zeros. Okay, so uh, this is this a measurement with an accuracy of three significant digits, okay? Because we're measuring 500 ten thousandths of a second. If we cut off those zeros, if those weren't, if those uh, last two zeros weren't there, we would just be measuring five uh, hundredths of a second, which is a different measurement than measuring 500 ten thousandths of a second. Okay, what does that mean? Where does this, like, how do we make sense of this? Um, the, if we're able to measure down to the nearest 10,000th of a second, that is a much different device uh, capability than measuring to the nearest hundredth of a second. Okay, so that's what these last two zeros tell us. They tell us a lot. They tell us something very important. They tell us that uh, we are not, in fact, just measuring down to the nearest hundredth of a second, kind of like our stopwatch or, you know, our cell phone does. We are, in fact, measuring those extra two zeros tell us that we are, in fact, we have a device that allows us to measure ten thousandths of a second. And the time interval that we just measured with that device is five hundred ten thousandths of a second. So the meaning of those two things, those two values, 0 0.05 and then 0 0.0500. The meaning of those two things are very different. So let's make sure we understand significant digits. Um, the rules for significant digits are that all non-zero digits are significant. Okay, um, a, a digit that's not a zero cannot be a placeholder. And again, a placeholder is just another way of saying a placeholder zero is just another way of saying it's not a significant digit. Okay, so uh, in this value, 156.4 has four significant digits. Next rule, all the zeros between significant digits are significant. So if a zero is between two non-zero numbers, that zero is automatically significant. Okay, um, and you, at this point you may be thinking, what does it really mean the significant anyway? It just means a significant digit means a digit that has actually been measured rather than a digit that just acts as a placeholder for our decimal system. That's the difference. And I hope that difference will become clear as we look at some more examples. So, uh, third rule in a number greater than one, a zero that's specially tagged, like having a bar above it, is significant. So this value, 230,000 kilometers, has three significant figures because that zero is marked as having been measured rather than just a placeholder um, that just tells us where to put the two and the three. Okay, All zeros to the right of a significant digit and a decimal point are significant. So, for example, if it's to the right of a significant digit and a decimal point, this is extra one, just like the, up here, these two zeros, up, oh, uh, these two zeros right there, okay, uh, those are significant. Again, 
Significant just means something that we actually measured, a zero that we measured to be exactly that value, zero, rather than just a placeholder. Uh, rule four, all zeros to the right of a significant digit and a decimal point are significant. Uh, okay, sorry, we already <laughs> just did that. Um, number five, in whole number measurements, zeros at the right that are not tagged are not significant. Okay, so if it doesn't have a decimal point in the value um, and it's to the right of a significant figure, it's not significant. That's what we mean by placeholder. It's just sort of adding zeros into our decimal system so that we know where to put the two and the five. Same thing with number six. In measurements less than one, zeros at the left are not significant. The 0 0.00752 has only three significant figures those or digits those uh, zeros just sort of tell us where to put the seven five and two in our decimal system okay when a number is written this is a very important rule i'm going to highlight this okay when the number is written oh i didn't get, catch all of it uh, get that mellow yellow highlighting up oh. For some reason, it's stopping at that value. I don't know why it's stopping and not highlighting. Okay. Um, I think the, the numbers are written in a different font, and that's what's messing with the highlighting. But this is a very important rule. When a number is written in scientific notation, the decimal part indicates the number of significant digits. For example, this 200... thousand meters, where the, that second zero after the two is significant, has three significant figures, okay? And when you write a number in scientific notation, you always write all the significant digits. That's one of the reasons why we use significant or scientific notation, because you always know exactly how many significant digits, right? When you write, when you read a number in scientific, scientific notation, if it's zero is there, it's significant. If a digit's there, it's significant. That's one of the values of scientific notation. So. That's why we write this number as, right, again, scientific notation, there's always just one digit in front of the decimal point and then however many other significant figures after that. So to sum up, to find the number of, number of significant digits, all non-zero digits are significant, zeros are significant when they are between significant digits, follow the decimal point and a significant digit or are in a whole number and a bar is placed over the zero, okay? So, um, this table, I'm not going to talk through. You can look at that yourself. Um, I'm maybe look at this H, value H here, or problem example H. Again, these zeros, these four zeros here, are just placeholders. Okay, we would, scientific notation would write this as 1.567, no zeros, 1.567, times 10 to the 6th, 7th, times 10 to the 7th, okay? Uh, here, these two zeros after the decimal point and significant digits, significant digits are significant. So, all right, um, that is section 1.7. Let's look at precision now. We've uh, looked at accuracy. Let's look at precision. Precision is something different. Precision is, again, kind of what we uh, think about when we say, wow, that's a very precise measurement. That's a very precise tool. Uh, the precision is the smallest unit to which or with which a measurement is made. Okay, That is the precision of the last significant digit. So, for example, in these examples that we looked at before, we're looking at them now with respect to precision, uh, right this these three zeros are not significant they're just placeholders so the first significant digit is in the thousand kilometers place so this the precision of this measurement is to the nearest thousand kilometers or just the precision we say is the thousand kilometers um, example two again these two zeros are just placeholder zeros so the precision of this measurement is to the nearest one hundredth of a centimeter Okay, this five in the this five digit is in the hundredths place. 
the units is centimeters. So the precision is to the nearest hundredth of a centimeter. I'm sorry, <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> I apologize, I was reading this wrong. Uh, example two, the precision of this is the nearest thousandth of the centimeter. Hundredth would be the two, thousandth is the five, okay? Um, I apologize for the confusion. I need to read this carefully. Uh, all right, so precision here. This is, this five is the in the hundredths place, but look at these extra two zeros. Those extra two zeros are significant zeros. So we go, okay, a hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. The precision of this last significant figure, which is a zero, but it is a significant zero, is the ten thousandths place. So the precision is the ten thousandth or a ten thousandth of a second. Okay, we're measuring each of these things to the nearest, uh, in this case, thousand kilometers, in this case, nearest thousandth of a centimeter, uh, in this case, the nearest ten thousandth of a centimeter. Okay, so um, let's look at these, let's look at a couple examples with respect to both precision and accuracy. So the, if the, we make a measurement of four, ten thousandths of a centimeter okay pretty good measurement um, we make this measurement to the nearest ten thousandth of a centimeter so the precision is a ten thousandth of a centimeter because that's what we're measuring to the nearest of uh, the accuracy is however one significant digit okay now you might think that seems like low accuracy yes because accuracy is different from precision Okay, you can think about it this way. It is low accuracy, only one significant digit. Think about it this way. Um, the fact that we rounded to the nearest 10,000th of a centimeter means it could be anywhere between 0 0.0035 and 0 0.0044, uh, you know, repeating. Okay, 0 0.04, uh, in this case, 0 0.00049 it could be. So um, we could, we've could we rounded this value to get the nearest 10,000th, but that rounding as a fraction or as a proportion of the value itself, the amount that we rounded as a uh, fraction or percentage of the value itself is actually very large, okay? Whereas look down here. The accuracy of this is four significant digits. You think, uh, you could think, is this greater accuracy, better accuracy? Yes, four significant digits is better than one significant digit. In what sense? I mean, because you ask, but I've only measured this to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So the precision is much less to the nearest one uh, tenth of a centimeter, but the accuracy is more. How do we make sense of these two things? Well, uh, again, you're, to measure this to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, you're not using anywhere near as precise as a tool, okay? Uh, you could probably use this on a meter, meter stick because meter sticks are measured to the nearest millimeter, which is a tenth of a centimeter. So all you need to measure this thing is a meter stick, right? Um, but then if you ask the question, is that accurate? Right, we measured something 378 centimeters long. It's pretty long, right? Three meters, that's almost four meters. That's over, that's pretty close to, actually it's over 12 feet, okay? Something 12 feet long measured to the nearest millimeter. That's a really good measurement in terms of accuracy. And again, what does that mean? You can kind of intuitively think, yes, that's pretty good if we measured something to, you know, over 12 feet long to the nearest millimeter. But, but what does that mean, a good measurement, an accurate, accurate measurement? It just means that the rounding that we did to the nearest one millimeter is a very small part of the total measurement, the total length, okay, again, up here, the rounding that we did to the nearest 10,000th of a 
centimeter is not a small part, right? It's possibly, um, right, the rounding that we did is a one ten thousandth to get this four ten thousandths. That rounding is actually 25%, right, one over four of the value itself. That's very bad accuracy, okay? So when we count significant digits, we are representing something very meaningful. What we're representing is the amount that we rounded by as a percentage of or as a proportion of the total value itself okay that is what this very simple counting of significant digits does the precision is just very very straightforward it's just what you know how to to what level did we round our measurement okay in this case we rounded to the nearest ten thousandth it's precise to the nearest ten thousandth in this case we measured to the, it is precise or, right, stated to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Okay, so I'll let you work through these examples. Um, very, very important, but I want to talk about this, okay, this activity. If you measure the time it takes to run a 100-yard dash, okay, Olympic sprinters can do that. Uh, it's actually 100 meters, but... Um, that they do it in about nine seconds. So a hundred yard dash, let's say, okay, about 10 seconds. If you use a digital stopwatch, uh, like you can find on your phone, it measures to the nearest one hundredth of a second. Okay, so I'm gonna see if this shows up in my, in my uh, the video. Let's, let's do this as an example okay um can you see that okay good so i measured a time interval 2.71 seconds okay the accuracy of this is three significant digits so okay there you go uh the the precision is the nearest hundredth of a second okay if I measure with a stop, with a uh, wristwatch, with a second hand, obviously I can only measure that, take that time measurement to the nearest second. So the precision of a wristwatch is one second. The precision of this thing is one hundredth of a second. Okay. What about accuracy? The precision of this is three significant digits. If I measured this with a wristwatch, I would have to, of course, uh, round to the nearest second because it only displays seconds. It would be three seconds. So the um, accuracy of the wristwatch with the second hand would just be one significant digit. Okay. All right. So we we kind of intuitively think this is a better measurement than just writing three seconds because I. You know, the nearest second of the second hand was three. How is this better? Well, it's better in two ways. It's better in the sense that it's more accurate. It has three significant figures. The rounding that this does is a very small fraction of the actual value. Okay, so three significant figures, more accurate. It's more precise because it measures to the nearest one hundredth of a second. So this is a situation where the thing that is more accurate is also more precise, but that is not always the case. So keep an eye out for that. All right, folks, um, one last comment. This is a really great example, uh, something where accuracy and precision both affect our everyday life. The gas tank, right? Or, sorry, the gas pump. When we go buy gas, uh, you'll notice that the price of the gas is listed the nearest uh, tenth of a cent Okay, and uh, the number of gallons, sometimes the nearest hundredth of a gallon, sometimes the nearest thousandth of a gallon. So again, those values that I just stated are precisions, right? The price that you pay is precise to the nearest uh, tenth of a cent. And again, this could change, you know, this is just an example. It could change between gas pumps. And then the precision of the, the gas um, measurement and the amount the volume measurement is to the nearest hundredth or sometimes thousandth of 
a gallon. So if we zoom in on this, um, we can see, right, this sale. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Let's see if we can pull that up. Okay. No, <laughs> you can take a look. It's not. It's not as clear enough in my picture, but you can look at look. You know, if you can determine this for yourself, look at the near the precision of the amount that you pay and the uh, volume of gas that you just bought. Okay, the accuracy. Let's say you know you bought two cents, <laughs> right? The, if you bought two cents worth of gas, you could, I suppose, um, the accuracy of that would be pretty small, one digit, okay? Because those zeros in front of that two would be just placeholders. So it is very important that uh, someone actually measure that the, the precision stated on the display, right, for how much you're paying and how much you're buying. Uh, it's very important that someone actually measure that those precisions are correctly read by the display, right, by the meter. Um, so yes, we do have someone, a, an official, that comes around and confirms those measurements. So you know, that's precision and accuracy in everyday life. All right, folks, I am going to stop this lecture. That is sections uh, 1.7 and 1.8 and then I'm going to do a different separate lecture on section 1.9 where we're going to put all this together uh, in terms of not only using it um, in not only identifying the precision accuracy but using it in calculations. Alright folks uh, I'll see you in the next lecture.